Welcome YouTubers to today's episode of FL Performance Garage and on how to get rid of that annoying low coolant warning you're getting on your dash of either the following years 2017 to 2019 Silverado with the 6.6 .6 Duramax diesel engine. We'll be replacing the old coolant reservoir tank with a brand new GM brand tank that comes already with the new sensor molded into the tank. Many of these trucks seem to be suffering from this defect. He commented that he paid $60 for the reservoir tank and $700 for labor to the dealer to replace the reservoir tank. I paid $100 for the same tank and waited four weeks for it to arrive. The dealer had the tank in stock but wanted $134 for it. So I ordered it online and guess what? It was on back order. That is why I was so slow in, getting, in creating this video and getting this video to you. Today, we'll be working in my backyard just like a lot of you will be doing also. No lift, no air conditioning, just real world do-it-yourself shade tree or really not, or really in the sun or not in the sun today. I'm going to save you $700, hopefully get you to like and subscribe to my channel, FL Performance Garage, so we both have our goals for today. Goal one, present a video that will help you take care of this project yourself and save you some money at the same time. And goal two, get you to subscribe and like my channel, but only if you like my video and want more videos like this. Enough. Tools that you will need, 10 millimeter socket, 13 millimeter socket, short and long sockets, pliers, flat screwdriver, 3 8 drive ratchet, 3 8 drive extensions, one short, one long, and one medium, a bucket to catch the old coolant and protect your pets from being poisoned by the coolant, shop towels, small bungee cord, rope or string, black spray paint in case there is some rust underneath the tray, Electric grease, a very small amount. One gallon of approved orange coolant, a marker, safety glasses, and of course, the coolant reservoir, which is part 84257137. This is a GM original equipment product. Let's unbox it and check it before we start taking the truck apart. Very difficult one-handed. The top doesn't come with a cap, but the side comes with a cap. Brand new cap, you're gonna keep it. You're not gonna use the old one. In here, Once the tank fills up, when it's, side, it's sitting on its side, like that, once it fills up, it'll drip. So it's going to fill up the expansion tank back here to right about here. Now, what I've said before, your sensor lives on this side of the tank. If you can see it, let me hold the camera back. If you see it, your, your sensor, one, it can't be replaced. You have to buy the whole tank to get this sensor. And this is what you're getting your, your warning light. It's a two part tank. This part, when the, the coolant gets down to about here, I don't know if you can see it on camera, this sensor will tell you, A, you're low on coolant. You still have, you still have this much to go. Let me see if I can put this for a better view. Yeah, much better. Okay, this is your sensor. Lives on the front part towards the bumper of the car. We're gonna be disconnecting this hose up here 
this one that comes across, this one that comes across, and this 10 millimeter bolt. The sensor has these legs, not the sensors, I'm sorry. The tank has these legs that'll go into the body. You're not gonna be able to pull this tank up. It's gonna slide forward and release. I've seen a lot of people drill this hose, this hole, in order to push coolant in here. If you fill up your coolant, it'll go, gravity will take it and fill up to where it needs. It will then drain when it's full from that top hole that you see right there. You're gonna take your cap once that's done and we're gonna go through it and put it back. Right now I'm just gonna put this back on so I don't forget it and don't lose it or mix it up with the old one. So this is it. You're, you're gonna throw away your overflow. The tank, there's a brand new one that comes with it. The only thing you're gonna use is your old cap. The new tank doesn't come with a new, a new cap. Clean the old rings around the old cap. Okay.
now that we've put a pan underneath the truck to catch any coolant when we disconnect this hose right here I don't know if you can see it like that and we're going to disconnect this we're going to move this over there this hose like I told you we're going to tie up facing up so it doesn't drain the coolant that's in the tank we're going to disconnect this 13 millimeter this 10 millimeter this 10 millimeter right here and we're going to lift lift this bus up and over you can do you can remove it completely i'm just going to leave it connected here for convenience and same thing here it's going to take a little prying to move it up but we're going to get to that i'll show you now Forgot these are 13. And I remember I put a mark so I know that this is my first one. Put them back, set your wires to the side, take your flat screwdriver again, and right here you can push down and it'll come out. You can also hear there's a tab, you can push down there. I just like it here, it's a lot easier for me. Like I was saying, you can push here, and put it back, and it pulls out, or you can use the tab and pull out. I happen to like it, have access right here. Pull mine out. I don't mark these. I will clean them, they got some crud, because of the size. You can't mix these things up. Put it to the side where you're at. Pry your positive cable. At this point, you know what? I got to change of mind. And this is... It's going to make my life a lot easier and hopefully yours. We know two and three, take pictures. On here, it's gonna be three. And the other one, two. So two and three. If I mess up, I'll just go back to my video. So anything holding this battery down, it is a 13 millimeter on the hold down bracket.
hold on to it. Don't lose it. Now that I have the battery out of the way, you can see we have all kinds of room here to work on this. We're gonna be taking out, like I said, this, let me see, 10 millimeter bolt. That's all that holds the tank. Now the tank's gonna slide forward, but we're gonna lose coolant when we take off this clamp. And that's why we wanna tie this up facing up and we're gonna take this clamp. Once we have that, we're 50% of the way there. Okay? We're gonna use the existing clamp. Get yourself some channel locks or pliers because we're gonna squeeze this one. And here, this is gonna get thrown out with the, with the tank. And I'm gonna show you where your sensor lives. At this time, before we start pulling everything, we're going to reach down here and we're going to get that little sensor. Let me see if I'm able to get the camera close enough. This is our problem right here. This is the one that constantly gives us a warning light inside there. And that has a pry there. Don't break it off. I'm just showing you. And we're going to disconnect that one. Let me go ahead and do it now. That's as simple as it is. And it only goes in one way, it has a tab on the tank. Set it aside. This is the time to clean if you have rust. I'm just gonna wipe this down. You know, uh, as you can see, we got some rust building up there. But let's get this out. I'll release this. I got some string. And what I'm going to do is lasso it there and tie it so it comes across and holds my hose up so I don't lose the coolant that's in here and I don't introduce air into the system. Okay. I do this because I don't want to be bleeding this and taking longer. Oops. Uh, clumsy. Now your tank is ready to come out. It has two tabs on the bottom, slide it forward, and you're gonna slide the tank up. Come on, baby. Sensor's out. There we go. There is our tank. And like I told you, it's a two-part tank. When it overfills, it comes into this tank here. As you can see in the color, most of it lives, over, well, most of it lives here, rarely. This, when this tank gets low, it's going to pull back through its reservoir here. So here's our headache, our sensor that uh, we always have issues with. I'm gonna 
Might need a better video there. Let's see. Here's our sensor. There's no way of replacing this sensor. You gotta replace the whole tank. Now that we got the old cooling tank out, we're going to reinstall our new cooling tank. And it's a reverse procedure. But what I want you to remember, these tabs have to go right in there and they go back and lock in. This is a good time to get a rag, clean up, because I don't expect to be back here for a while. If you have some built up rust, there's a time to spray it. Unfortunately, I don't have any spray right now. Then. I recommended it, but didn't bring it. This is the way the reinstallation goes back in. Yeah, play with it until you find those little holes I was telling you about. Be patient. Be patient. Make sure you get your sensor out of the way, which was my case. There we go. That slides right back, locked in. Before I replace the uh, 10 millimeter bolt there, I don't know if you can see it. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. I'm going to connect my sensor because I have the space for it. Because in case I can't get it on the first shot, which seems to be the case. As you can see, the sensor, where it goes, and it lives on this side of the tank. Let's see if I get lucky. There you go. So there we go. It sat in there. It's nice and tight. Now, before I do anything else, I'll take my 10 millimeter. Put it in there. Start it by hand, please. Don't want to cross thread it. You've seen some of my other videos where I complain and moan about other people cross threading spark plugs, especially. All right, we had a little issue with the camera not working, but I put the bolts back. Two, as you can see there, three, put the positive cable. Remember the mark that I had, the mark I had on the cable, we knew it was this one, follow it. Now here, there's only one way, you have the small and the large. So this locks back in. 
And finally, this has tabs on the sides, which correspond with the tabs here. Set your thing. One, three, lock in. Push in your, your things and you're done. You got your hose back in, got your drain hose. You got your backwards cap. We didn't lose any Freon in the hose. So we're just gonna add some now. This might take a Oh, it takes more than a gallon. But as you can see, it's not that difficult. Um, hopefully you like this video. Hopefully you like this video. I'm going to put the instructions step by step on the description below. You know, congratulations. Uh, you have completed the coolant tank, the installation, and you saved yourself $700 in dealer fees. Nowadays, we need to save everywhere we can, but this is $700, um, less than an hour in your backyard. As you can tell, um, it's hot. I started early in the morning, so, I think I've met my goal. I've been struggling with the cameras, learning this system, but hopefully you like the, the channel, the FL Performance Garage, um, the 6.6 .6 Duramax. So do me a favor before you, you leave, click the subscribe and like button. That tells YouTube that I didn't do a horrible video and that some people like me. So please hit subscribe and like that way I'm able to continue and get motivated. I'm not here for the money. I'm here because I enjoy this. I'm not a mechanic. I have a separate career. So I, as my hobby, I decided I'm gonna teach and help people do it themselves. The dealers charge way too much. There's certain stuff that you need to take it to the dealer because they have specialty tools. But coolant tanks like this, the coolant sensor light inside, a common problem for these trucks and for someone to charge you $700 labor that's excessive all right thank you remember to subscribe and hit that like button see you on my next video uh, some of you were commenting already but I forgot didn't forget saved it for last my bracket this side and get it started and this side it's the other way around you got me Usually about after this, I get tired. It wasn't like that before. Once the sun starts beating on you, you start to lose your patience for the simplest things.
13 millimeter. We still have to top it off, but strange, they have their reasons for it. And there you have it, my friends. $700 savings. thing you may notice when you're driving the vehicle and you, you disconnected the battery it has to reset itself so as you're driving and you're looking for your tire pressure it'll eventually come back I drove maybe half a block and um, the tire pressure sensors picked up so it's gonna go through its cycle and don't worry about it it will it will go back to normal Once you connect the batteries, the whole thing has to be reprogrammed. Uh, the worst thing of this is the radio. You gotta reset. But no cool, no low coolant. I'll get the English straight in a minute. Hold. Low coolant warning signal is no longer on the dash. This seems to be a problem between 2017 2019. I've noticed in 2020 they changed up their uh, design of the reservoir tank. But a viewer commented that he went to the dealer, they charged him $60 for the jug and $700 labor. Um, I think I did my goal today was to save you $700 and teach you how to do it yourself. It's not that difficult. It's taking a puzzle apart and putting it back together. Hopefully I achieved my goal the video, I'm working on better videos, better equipment, but that comes with time. Um, if you want to continue to see videos on this uh, Chevrolet Silverado 2500 with the diesel engine, uh, subscribe and, and hit like so YouTube uh, knows that I'm doing something right. All right, thank you. God bless.
hell out of this. <laughs> no doubt about it. But I wanted to show you this sensor. It is a front of your existing cap where you, you fill up the cap that's on the side. Your 10 millimeter bolt that holds it to the frame. Your large radiator cap. And the smaller, not the radiator cap, sorry about that. The larger hose goes here, the smaller one up here. So it comes this way. Your sensor lives here and it's a float. You see it? When that float gets down to this level, it'll send a signal. Mine was all the way fill to the top all the time, either the floats damaged or defective, and, um, but I was saying, let me see if I can get you a picture. This tank has bathrooms. You see it there? The hole and this tank, see if it stands up by itself long enough to. This tank is separated from this one here. The sensor comes up, coolant comes down. This that's floating on top, comes out, makes contact, sends a signal out. Got it? And by the looks of it, there is no way of replacing that sensor. You need to buy the whole tank. And it's one tough tank. I don't think these tanks are, will pop. It has inner walls in it. I mean, it's a well-made tank. Um, I went to town on it. Just to show you what I was talking about, the separation of the bottom tank. You can see the difference in color, where the sensor is and where it lives. So there is no way that if the back tank is low, like some of you claim, that, that light's gonna come on. It's just, this has to be low. Once this is low, this is low. But if you have a full tank here, and again, here's the sensor. Don't believe what I say. It's sitting right there on the top portion of your tank. Just imagine uh, your car, you open it up. It's not gonna look like this, because if it does, you're in trouble. Um, but that's the sensor, and that answers all of our questions. How come we can't replace the sensor? So it's molded into the internal part of the tank. All right, have a nice day.